Welcome back trainers and in this video we're going to be taking a look at Ultra League battles using XL Umbreon and Gengar with this community day move Shadow Punch and we're going to have Sludge Bomb on it as well as Shadow Claw as you can see here and uh, we're just going to be periodically switching that third Pokemon may use it several times and then you know switch it to something else but the uh, third Pokemon is not going to be the focus here and we're also going to be doing story time if you do follow me on Twitter. I did say that we're going to be talking about competitive battles back when I was playing the main series games. This was several years ago, and this is going to be some fun stuff. People were telling me to out them, tell me their names. I mean, this was so long ago, and th th honestly, that's not what this is about. Um, <laughs> it's just about telling you a fun, uh, entertaining story uh, about my past life. Uh, well, <laughs> a past events. All right, anyways, so with that said... Take a look at the battles here and let's get into this. Now, this is going to be kind of like a, I don't know how other way to explain it. I mean, there's maybe several ways, but it's going to be kind of like a Quentin Tarantino style. We've already talked about this kind of story before, but we're going to go more in depth and talk about several other things. I actually go to a Pokemon Go uh, battle group, very competitive, and uh, end up becoming friends with some of them, some really nasty people there. And then eventually it's going to inevitably lead me to go to tournaments. It really starts bringing out my heavy, heavy competitive side because of a lot of people that I do encounter that have such uh, big egos and uh, they just think that they can beat anybody at this game, right? So it, it, it bring out my competitive side and I wanted to show them a thing or two and not just there at these meetups, but at the tournaments later down the line. So let's go ahead and get into this now. Many, many years ago, uh, I was probably like, say, like 23 or so, maybe around that age. So a little bit over 12 years now. And um, I was, I would say, living in probably one of the worst parts of town. Uh, it was a bad time of my life, and it was just all bad. And basically, I didn't have a job. I was getting unemployment, and a lot of what I was doing was trying to find a job and playing a ton of Pokemon, and <laughs> I was about to say Pokemon Go, but you know, it's just, it's just the way it goes. It was actually black and white, and it was a uh, a cartridge my brother had sent me, and it contained like 250 games, and it, it worked, and it was allowing me to even play it online with other people, so I got big into that. I was already into Pokemon, I just decided to come back to it, and this was kind of around the time where Halo Reach was out, and I was big into that. If you remember the holographic skull mask that you can get in that game, where basically you get this halo mask that looks like a skull holograph inside. Boy, you basically earn credits and then you get enough credits to buy it. But it was like an outrageous amount. And I think I finally was able to get it. And it was to the point where I finally got enough credits. And I got this mask that was so sought after by everybody that I, I didn't even want to play anymore. <laughs> so uh, just to give you an idea of the timeline here. All right. So... Um, I find this group on, I do believe it was like Facebook. I go and I meet up with them. We've heard about this before, but we'll talk about it again. Um, a lot of ego, a lot. You can cut it with a knife there. I mean, these people were, uh, you know, they were, they were good at the game. They knew what they were doing, right? But there, there's going to be a caveat here and it's going to revolve around some, some of these people were cheating and it, and it actually boils down to me. Well, not boils, but it comes down to me inviting some of these people over to my house and I find out this way. And they it wasn't like they, it slipped. They, they openly just told me. So basically, I'm, I'm at this place. It was at um, a S Starbucks, I do believe. A very far part of town. Just a far away place for me. So I'd go there and meet up. It was good times. A lot of nice people. They had gym leaders. You had to beat them and you would get a badge. Uh, one in specific, the psychic gym leader... Um, everybody would jewel over them, like just simp over this person. It was so just cringe. And I go to battle. I set my team up. I'm so excited. I had to take like two buses to get to this freaking place anyway. Right. And I didn't really have that much money, but I would scrounge up the, you know, few things that I had so I can go competitively play and learn things from these people because I was so intrigued. So I, Finally uh, made my team to go up against the psychic leader. You know, they have all psychic Pokemon, so you can use... There's no rules on what you can use. You can go in there with all dark types. But these uh, trainers are trained to obviously combat with their weaknesses. So I beat her, and it was a clean sweep and all that stuff. And I would watch very observantly at how these people interacted with each other. And after she had battled any other trainer, and they beat 
them or beat her uh she would instantly give them the badge they didn't have to ask and it was like oh good game good game you know that was really fun had a few laughs and um you know they got their badge but for me i beat her and not one word was said after that because completely ignored me didn't even ask for the badge and or, or didn't give me the badge when i asked for it then it got this attitude so what am i getting at here well it's the build up to the tournaments all of this kind of like attitude and uh, just throwing me to the curve kind of stuff is what is going to inevitably build me up to want to take these people out at the tournaments and just break their wings. So that happened. I didn't make a big deal out of it. I was more of a soft spoken person and these kind of things is what's led me up to being kind of so defensive. If you find me being like that on Twitter or anything like that, plus what's going on. So I, you know, I do have my guard up. Anyways, all that happens and and that's just not one person, it's a bunch of different people. And they would even openly mock a specific Pokemon. So I was using a Minshaw, and this guy was just bragging about his ice team because he was the ice gym leader, ooh. Like I would describe these people and what they look like, but we don't need to get petty like that. That's not what we're here for, even though you would probably have a laugh or two. Steampunk, okay, <clears throat> anyways. Uh, so this guy, uh, you know, he's like, uh, nobody could beat this team, you know. Well, if you can beat me, then you're going to have to really, you know, try hard and have pretty much counters to my entire team. It's like, dude, you got a nice team. Like, what are you doing? So I, I go in there. I throw in my Minshaw after it wasn't like the first Pokemon. I, I forgot exactly. Like maybe the second one I put it in there and I sweeped him. I sweeped his entire team. I was just thinking to myself, how, what are you bragging about? You got an ice team, my guy. I mean, rock and fighting are going to just demolish you as well as fire. Uh, so after that, you know, he had a uh, whole attitude and what goes on with these people is if you beat them They record the battle and if it doesn't upload to the uh, Servers basically in in the main games. I, I don't know if th this still works like this, but you can record your battles and Upload them for other people to see and you get a code so you can distribute it and kind of like share it If it doesn't upload that means somebody has some sort of cheating stat distribution between the Pokemon now, this is, it can get complicated or it can't. I'll, I'll just explain it very simply. And I don't remember exactly the number of IVs. This is effort value. So effort value means the effort that you put into Pokemon for their hidden training numbers. Basically, there's a number of 252 or 253 or something around there that you can evenly distribute between your Pokemon stats. So basically, if they cap out at 150 attack with those hidden ivs you can bring it up a lot higher than it initially is so, and you can distribute these through all your stats right so if you have something fishy going on like an, like something that's above 252 or 253 i forgot what the ivs that you can have uh then it won't allow you to upload it because well it's cheated that team has been cheated uh so Anytime they lose, they would upload it, and if it didn't, then, then, you know, obviously that person was cheating. And I'm not saying that it's not okay for them to do that, but this is the kind of ego that they have if they, like, get beat, like, oh, you must be cheating, right? So, another testimony as to the buildup that I need to beat these people at a tournament and, and you know, show who's boss. Show them who is boss, all right? <laughs> all right. So, I keep going to these tournaments. I meet a few friends, and, uh, you know... I warm up to a few people, they warm up to me, and they're actually pretty cool people, right? We had no problems amongst the toxicity there, which is always going to happen in every community of gaming or a lot of things, right? So eventually, I have them over for dinner, or I just have, I don't really have them over for specifically dinner. I just happened to make dinner, and they, they actually wanted to eat. Um, and, you know, we're talking, we're, you know, having a good old time, preparing for a tournament, and... They bust out their computers and they're starting to put all these numbers in and do these things. And then I'm like, what are you doing? And, and one of them puts his finger to his lips in like a shh motion, but doesn't say shh. And he just like does it, but he's like, quiet, don't tell anybody. I'm like, what are you, what are you talking about? You know, let me see what's going on over here. And what they're doing is the effort value requires you to put in effort to, to gain these hidden stats behind your Pokemon. And, okay, if you want to put in the effort value, like, not legitimately, but you, you keep it to the legitimate number of 200 or whatever it is, and you distribute it, okay, fine, whatever. 
okay but what they were doing was going beyond the number of that 250 so 250 in attack 250 in defense to the max for everything so their pokemon were gods and you can't beat these things in a tournament okay you cannot do this all right you can but it's going to be very difficult you're basically going up against a god tier pokemon with max EVs or no IVs EVs sorry <laughs> individual IVs and then ever value IVs there's do two different ones um anyways so I'm listening very carefully and I'm like what the heck these guys are this is a corrupt system <laughs> it's like you know somebody finding out who's in the system that it's corrupt and if you're that naive then okay so I'm thinking all right this is very interesting I'm not gonna rat nobody out <laughs> why would I do that I mean if I do that might as well not even show my face at these things anymore. So that happens. I'm observing them very carefully and listening to them and uh, just asking a lot of questions about strategy and how they play. And when you're doing stuff like this with your team and your, your things are just like completely hacked out like this, honestly, you, you do need strategy, but <laughs> you could just put in some killer Pokemon and figure it out in the heat of the battle with those kind of stats. So um just listening to all their stuff and battling them at this starbucks tournament over time i've i got a hint and a clue as to their play style and what to expect and everything like that it's not like pokemon go you don't throw to, to catch a move right this is a turn-based thing you got to strategize on this right it's not like this many of you already know so let's get to the juicy stuff right the tournament huh Where's your revenge? Where's your comeback? Do you uh, call them out in front of everybody at a tournament? No, I don't. You don't, I don't do that. But what I do is basically just beat them. You j just simple as that. I didn't cheat myself. I, you know, stayed legit. My secret weapon was Togekiss back in the day. Now it's flying and fairy type now, but before it was normal and flying. And it had a move called Extreme Speed and Choice Band. Now, what Choice Band did was you equip it on your Pokemon and it raises your attack significantly, and but it'll only allow you to use that one attack that you initially use when you entered the battle. If you retreat your Pokemon, you can use whatever move again when you bring it back in, but when you hit that first move, you have to keep using it. That is the conditions of the Choice Band and raising your attack. Now, on this Togekiss, we also had an ability called Hustle, which raised our attack. Do you see where this is going? The Extreme Speed has priority to go first unless you're um, going up against another Pokemon that has extreme speed with higher attack. You kind of have the same, almost the same concept as Pokemon Go if you meet that kind of like, you know, head-to-head -head or neck-to-neck -neck attack. So anyways, this Togekiss was our sweet secret weapon and it was destroying everything. Now here's the only drawback. When you have Hustle, it does lower your accuracy. So if I missed, well, that's a big, big, big... Um, struggle that I have to come back from. So there is a bit of a gamble. I was a gamble player, right? I loved it. But if you hit big, you hit big. And I'm going to tell you pretty much hit big all the time here. So tournament time, we went to many of them. And here's the deal. There was a, uh, okay, yeah, sure. Whatever. The place is closed. It was a place called trade and play. And um, it was a war zone for me. I'll tell you what the manager, the owner or whatever was the, the rudest person not that I've ever met, but he was one rude, nasty person, right? Just weird. Anyway, and the employees were cool. Some of them, you know, most of them, but there was a couple, you know, there were friends with these people that were going to the tournaments or the, the meetups at the Pokemon meetups with Starbucks. And there was favoritism and they knew they were cheating. And even if you ratted them out, there was nothing that you can do. So what these people were doing was before the tournament even started, you had to write down your Pokemon, your stats, your moves on a piece of paper, and it had to be legit. There was no confirmation. They didn't come through and check and see if you're being legit. If they wanted to, they would. If one of these people complained, they would. But here's the thing. Here is the leverage that I have. And I know I said I wouldn't rat them out, but if they tried to say anything to me, try to get me in trouble for whatever reasons, even though I was completely legit, or you know how it goes when you have friends on the inside you, they can do stuff i had leverage against them because they openly admitted to me of cheating so i wasn't going to use this against them if they didn't try to do something to me and if you're thinking well they're they're your friends no they weren't they were people that i hang on hung out with 
I may be said friends throughout this video, but no, no, they were not. All right. These people are acquaintances and absolute rivals. So tournament comes around and I didn't necessarily have to really worry about them because there were so many people you'd get matched up against them or other people, right? And they would even get taken out by other cheaters or legit players, right? Not everybody was cheating at these tournaments. Let's, let's get that clear. So I was, oh man, it was like one of those times where when you first start going, nobody really cares. And then you start winning and winning and winning and winning these tournaments. And then they start crowding around you and watching. And here's the problem with all these favoritisms and friends in this circle. They would come up and they would see my moves and they would tell them right away and they would just tell them all this stuff that I was doing. They would cut, they would walk behind me and, and, and uh, see what I was doing and then walk over to them and, and give them the low down dirty of what I had going on. Pretty dirty strategy. Right? What, was I, what was I gonna go tell the, 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 the person who was running the tournament? Hey, they're doing this. I mean, yeah. But, you know, it, it's just one of those situations where you just kind of chuck on. You're like, whatever, it's a Pokemon tournament. It's not like I entered with $100. I put down like 15 or something like that. Prize is going to be pretty good if we win, and we're going to win. So we do our thing. We battle one of the people that are just the one of the rudest at these meetups. We take them out. No good game afterwards. Just walk away. Pretty much most of these people, when you beat them, they just walk away with an attitude. It, it is it is so satisfying. I rather take that over a good game if you're gonna have an attitude. So the battles rage on. I battle people with uh, choice bands and evolites, which means I think that's what it's called, the evolite item. Basically, a Pokemon that is not fully evolved, equipped with the evolite item, is going to dramatically raise its defense stat, which is a pretty good thing. Uh, useful on Chansey, potentially Porygon 2, uh, amongst just many other ones. So we're putting in work here. We go up against somebody who has a massive, massive issue. They're saying, you know, I don't think your Pokemon are legit, and I don't think, you know, you're playing correctly. I'm like, all right, whatever. Look at the sheet that I wrote down all my stats. Let me, let's look at your sheet and let's see what you have going on. Instantly, their attitude changed. Oh, you know, I think I got to go. I think time, you know, it's time for me to leave. I didn't realize I had to do something. It was the most hilarious thing ever. I was like, I can upload this. Let's see. I try uploading it. It wouldn't upload. Oh, well, that could probably be your Pokemon. I was like, okay, well, let's look at my stats. Look at the sheet. Everything's legit. Doesn't seem like it's my Pokemon and quiet. I never heard a complaint out of that person in my life again when it, when it comes to these tournaments because I don't associate with these people. But yeah, that was a hilarious moment there. So we get going here and we get to the... Uh, we, we have a lot of different battles that we could talk about here. But for the sake of this video, we've got like... A couple more minutes here so we'll kind of wrap it up so i remember the last tournament that i went to uh, one of the employees when i won uh said to me somebody's got to break your wings and i just looked at him and i said how is that possible i've broken everybody's wings in here i'm soaring high you can't catch me dirtiest look i've ever gotten in my life it was the best <laughs> all right so when you would win they would take your picture and put it on the facebook page for this place and it got to the point where they wouldn't even ask me to take the picture. And then when I said something about it, they said, oh, we don't do that anymore. And it was just because I kept winning and I kept having to put my picture up. They hated me so much. And the only reason why I could think of is because I was an outsider. But it is what it is. And take that. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all next time.